Yo, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Ryu and today we're gonna be showing you guys the rotation sets for the sorcerer class. So I'm gonna be making this something quite easy to understand and also all of the descriptions about the rotations and more are gonna be in the description of the video. So now we're gonna be starting off with a mana boost rotation an intermediate, I mean, a basic rotation, my bad an intermediate rotation and an advanced rotation and uh, for the last part I'm gonna be showing you the sad reality of the sorcerer class so, let's begin by the way, every rotation will have their mana boost rotation so, don't worry, if you are only beginning, everything should be covered now let's get on first off we're gonna start with the basic rotation so for the basic rotation I'm not gonna be too strict and I'm gonna let you play along with the class so the first thing that we're gonna be doing with the basic rotation is to start with our pulse, following with the meteor lightning frost I mean flaming frost flaming lightning you can reset it as many times as you want don't worry and we're gonna be keeping now like this every here and there pop your hailstorm in case that you might be wanting to you know feel that empty space in your rotation so you don't feel like you're screwing it up and this is what you're gonna be doing as for your basic rotation I'll repeat myself arcane, meteor, lightning, flaming, frost fear, nova void pulse, flaming, lightning, and so it goes of course, there comes the fact that you can reset your lightning as many times as you want since it'll be the best option for you as a sorcerer but since you're only beginning the best thing is to at least learn your cooldowns and focus on what's going on your screen and not only on being DPAs Ok, now for your mana boost rotation we're gonna be using you know, mana boost a brooch not all the brooch are exactly a quarter foil but you may have your quick curve and so it will go you're gonna be spamming all of these skills it's basically the same rotation as if you were playing without it just that every here and there in case that you were actually doing the rotation pretty well you might be finding yourself using a painful trap or a flaming pillar now that also depends if you manage to reset your lightning strike and to reuse it as many times as you can but that's gonna be it for the basic guide now I'm gonna jump into the intermediate guide so intermediate rotation it's kinda similar to the basic rotation the only difference is going to be that you're gonna be trying to keep your hailstorm off cooldown and you might want to also focus on your lightning strike resets so as I said the rotation should be going on like this it's basically the same just that you will begin playing with your cooldowns a bit better and you might try to keep them up and also focus a little bit on your core skills which if you don't know the core skills of a sorcerer I did mention them in my previous part of the guide but I was talking about skills and glyphs so yeah this is what you're gonna be doing if you don't feel really comfortable with your cooldowns you can focus up above or well below it doesn't matter so you have it in your screen on the extra crit glyph that you're gonna be receiving from Arcane Pulse and also from Nova and when you know that one of them expires that might be the moment when you realize that you must use the other skill which is gonna be either Arcane Pulse or Nova take a look at the up above my screen on how I try to keep both of them active as many times as I can now I think that I just gave you enough 
gameplay of this rotation so let's pick up some mana modes since I'm a selfish ass guy and I don't wanna really spend mana potions now let's go up with the our mana boost rotation for the intermediate part of the rotations or the guide I don't even know what I'm saying anymore so this is what we're gonna be doing you're gonna pop your hailstorm you're gonna reset lightning and then you're gonna do brooch which I have on cooldown and the same mana boost thing now the thing about this is that you're gonna be prioritizing a bit more on your lightning resets and yeah I do know that I skip a lightning reset doesn't matter at all what matters is that you keep your things going on and by the way did you see that I let myself sleep the third meteor of arcane post I mean mana boost the reason why I did that is because on this rotation you shouldn't worry too much about losing your crit, I mean losing your cooldowns or something like that. Which is the reason why I let the mana boost slip away and then I pop my meteor for the reason that if you use your meteor strike whenever your mana boost only have like one second remaining you might do the extended meteor or enhanced meteor but the difference is that the damage is gonna be way smaller than the original meteor strike and it will also take a long time which it might mean losing a little bit of a damage but with that said we're gonna be jumping out to the advanced rotation for the sorcerer class rotations I swear that I don't even know what I'm saying every time that I say rotation <sighs> whatever anyways now we're gonna be jumping in with the advanced rotation so our advanced rotation is gonna be based on focusing hard like way too hard on handling the cooldowns and going hard on the core skills so of course everything we have it's time to be explained so let me show you a little bit of what this rotation will be because if I set the name of the skills as long as I'm also using them you're gonna witness the best tongue twist ever in your life so let's begin here start first reset lightning as many times as you can doesn't matter and now you do this as I said I will be getting these skills rotations and whatnot in the description so don't worry about but hey I didn't get to understand whatever you were doing don't worry it's fine Everything is gonna be in the description for you guys to understand it and learn it because Believe it or not you might find it easier to just read that than listening from me But yeah, this is basically the sorcerer advanced rotation or this is what I'm gonna be giving you guys as an idea for an advanced rotation Remember this is a guide so I'm not exactly telling you what to do every time that you are fighting or that you are doing something this is just a core for you to know what you should be doing and for you to be progressing with the sorcerer class so I'm gonna just pop this meteor up and we're gonna be ending this alright so that was it for the advanced rotation as I call it now let's hop in with the mana boost advanced version so the idea for this is that I'm gonna be pretending so far that you may be having all of your consumables ready such as it could be a canephra potion preferably for me because I find it kinda an issue using bravery on sorcerer unless just for me since my rotations I do them kinda too fast because this is not my main rotation so I could keep my cooldowns on because every here and there I stop but in my main rotation I do have some issues with the cooldowns and if I get more attack speed that will be troublesome so at for this point I'm gonna be pretending that you guys are gonna be having your root bear which it means that everything is gonna be alright so this is how you're gonna start your mana boost rotation same thing as before Harrison reset it didn't reset any god wait what the I hate it when I use that thing that way anyways 
Basically your mana boost rotation is gonna be focusing almost the same way, just that you are gonna be trying to this time get all of your meteors, it doesn't matter if the effect expires or not. This is what you're gonna be doing whenever you pop your mana boost. So the idea is to reset as many times your lightning strike and then focusing on the core. That's gonna be what you're gonna be doing. I know that it might probably be way too fast or whatever, but you might get the hang of it as long as you practice it and you keep it going. Of course, let's keep in mind that I can do this rotation perfectly smooth since I'm only hitting a fence because this is not even a door. And this door ain't gonna be doing sub aggro and whatnot. Now about how I deal with sub aggro and actually a real boss fight, that'll be shown in the last part which is gonna be the third part of my sorcerer rotation. Which I'm gonna be explaining. Why would you actually like to use sorcerer? And the only things compared with sorcerer and other classes. And also I'm gonna be explaining how you're gonna be reacting or how you're gonna be moving at each time on a boss fight. So now this is the part where everyone is gonna be kinda disappointed. But here comes the last rotation for sorcerer, which is called the no rotation. You honestly don't have a rotation in here. The rotation is gonna be prioritizing your skills according to your damage, cooldown and casting time. So I can allegedly give you a rotation for this. So basically if you're a veteran sorcerer you might be able to do this since I'm not exactly gonna be guiding you on how you're gonna be handling this stuff. But I'm gonna show you an example of how this no rotation guide looks like. So take a look. As you can see, I'm basically just popping up every skill that I find. And yes, actually Lightning Strike is a prioritized, even more prioritized than Arcane Pulse and Meteor. But simple fact that Lightning have an even better chance to crit, it have a lower cooldown, and it also, I don't know, it looks pretty. And yeah, I know that last example was actually awfully retarded. But there's something that I need to mention to you guys, and it's that whenever you are running, right now I have a mystic, since I don't want to get a priest to be, I don't know, spamming energy stars on this fence as many times as they can just to help me out with this. But lately, if you're playing with a priest, the gameplay is gonna be a bit different, since you're gonna be having an extra 5% cooldown reduction which is gonna be giving you somehow an advantage for you to be getting your rotation a bit better. This either goes for basic, intermediate, advanced and minor rotation stuff. So keep in mind to don't screw up whenever you're playing with a mystic after been playing a lot of time with a priest. So yeah, I think that this is gonna be it for this rotation guy. Now, if for some kind of reason you guys want to see how do I manage to handle all my mana boost, well, here you got it. By the way, I huge apologize for the keyboard machine, I'm just way too used to that. So yeah, as you can see, that's the way that I handle my mana boost rotation. But yeah, this is gonna be it for my sorcerer guide. As for the rotation section. Now in the last section, you know, actually screw that, I'm gonna do that right now. That way I don't have to care a bit less of doing more stuff, now that I can do it, you know, without any issues. 
So here's the thing guys, for the sorcerer I got told by a friend of mine in this server that whenever you're running with at last plus 314 crit factor, you know extra crit factor, you might already have enough crit to be able to at least deal an 80% crit chance of meteor and your core skills. And that's actually true. So, if you find yourself playing with a mystic and you don't feel like losing damage compared to when you're playing with a priest, you could simply remove one of these and get one of your power accessories. If you see that you can still have more power, then you can remove one and you can use one of these. As you can see, I have an extra 300, I mean, 314 crit factor, which I should have more, but I don't have an etching in any of these earrings. Plus, I'm gonna be removing these accessories since on the brawler patch the extra effect of crit factor is gonna be removed so that might probably change a little bit my statics for crit and my gear so just keep that in mind that whenever you get 314 crit factor you might probably be fine but still you might wanna add a little bit more crit so don't try to guide so much about that I'm just giving you an idea of an estimated amount of crit that you could have so you can be creating pretty well on Sorcerer. Now another thing that I want to mention about gearing and whatnot is that I preferably like to use a um, pounding crystal on Sorcerer because whenever you're gonna be running with a priest you might wanna get the pounding since the more power you have the more damage you're gonna be dealing to monsters. Now if you're running with a mystic and a brawler keep this in mind Unless this is how I do it, you know? But if you're running with a mystic and a brawler, I'd rather get a forceful crystal than a power crystal. I mean, than a pounding crystal. Because with the brawler, the difference between the brawler and the lancer is that lancer is gonna grant you some extra power whenever they use the guardian shout. So that will actually benefit you a lot on your burning phase. Uh, you might be most likely dealing more crit damage using a pounding. Now, if you at least have one of your power accessories, you will definitely want to go on a pounding crystal instead of forceful. Since forceful gives you, if I'm not wrong, uh, 22 or 21 extra power. So yeah, basically you might be benefiting a little bit more running out that way. Now, as for my gear, as you may get to know, the armor and boots etchings that I use are gonna be, in a few words, you know, grounding. You might want to get the extra endurance. You don't need to exactly be using an etching 4 to your Stormcry gear. You could use an etching 3, you don't need to be that expensive or be a Harrow Hall slave. As you can see here, I don't have yet an etching 4 to my gauntlets. But yeah. The etchings that I would recommend you to play if you have a decent ping on Sorcerer is gonna be double energetic and double grounding. You could use one energetic and one keen etching if you don't feel like having enough crit to deal, you know, a good amount of damage. So that's gonna be your best solution. Now as for the bridge, if you have a quick curve and you don't have a quadfoil, you might wanna run 6 crit and 4 crit factor as an extra. Now, as for the belt, I know that I have 6 crit and 4 crit, but I did this in desperation when I started the patch again, since I didn't have enough crit, so later on I'm gonna be changing that 4 crit factor to 3 power, or I might just upgrade my belt, which I don't want to because I'm way too selfish, and I'll just, you know, get what I need to do. As for the rings, you're gonna be rolling for power and for crit, you know, this is basically the basic DPA's rolls for your accessories. Your diadem, or however this is pronounced, you're gonna be rolling up with a crit factor if you're a class that actually depends on crit. Now if you're a Valkyrie, just in case that, I don't know why I'm even mentioning Valkyrie. <sighs> now I remember when I'm calling this a meme guide anyways, but whatever. To your e rings you're gonna be adding 4 HP and 4 Endurance rolls. And now here comes the part that some sorcerer has been wondering. If you're gonna be rolling on your weapon, if you don't have a Stormcrack or Frost Metal, 
and I want to know why can't I see my weapon rolls? Thank you very much. So as for the weapons, in my opinion, if you are running with Twitchar or Guardian, I recommend you to run one cooldown reduction, one enraged, one flat damage, and one attack from behind roll. The reason why I rather get this than double enrage is because you don't know if you're gonna be finding yourself in an instance matching with a trap party, or if you're actually gonna be running with a pretty good party. So there's no point for you to be burning so hard on the enrage phase when you will barely be able to reach to the enrage phase. So this is just my opinion, you guys can roll over 2 enrage or you can only roll 1 enrage. But make sure that your cooldown reduction is gonna be there, otherwise you won't be able to get your rotations going on. And as for the top, it's basically the same. 10% meteor strike roll, since this is your most overpowered skill. And if you're running with a Twitcher Guardian gear, just remove the max HP roll and get the frontal, flat and enraged damage modified. For boots and gauntlets it's the same thing as any other DPAs. Endurance, movement speed, mana regen on boots and attack, attack speed and crit on... well, it's power before somebody complains. Crit factor and attack speed for gauntlets. So yeah, with that I think that I just covered everything and I hope that this is actually worth for you guys and I forgot the goddamn necklace <sighs> I want to kill myself but yeah the necklace as you can see it's a four power roll the one that you're gonna be picking since honestly four power is better than four crit you might notice this later on when you realize how much could your damage change just by adding even two power to your basic stats. So yeah, that's gonna be it guys. Everything that I mentioned about rotations is gonna be written in the description. I'm also gonna be trying to get enough space in my in the description of the video to add the roles for the weapons and whatnot. Oh by the way, you don't exactly need to get the extra 24 crit factor in the wheel. Like you know this is only min maxing but you don't necessarily need this. You could even run with your 12 crit factor, 16 crit factor, 20, the one that you feel more comfortable with. But yeah, now I can actually say that this is gonna be the end of my guide. So I hope that this was really, you know, worth of your time and that this could actually help you out. So if you wanna kill me or something like that, just let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts. And thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video.